Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's talk about names and naming conventions dealing with triangles. Triangles are a very important shape in both geometry and trigonometry and in all kinds of applications in science, especially physics and mathematics. And so it's good that we understand the naming conventions very carefully. So a triangle is a polygon. Now poly means many and gon means sides. So polygon means many sides, but in particular, a triangle is a polygon that only has three sides. That's what makes it a triangle. Well, triangle means it has three angles, but that also means it has three sides. We can classify the shape of triangles both by their sides and by their angles. And in each case, we have three classifications. The first one is called a scalene triangle. Now, that's a name you don't hear very often, but what it means is that there's no equal sides. All three sides of the triangle are of a different length, and so it's called a scalene triangle. If two of the three sides are the same size, and the strict definition is at least two of them, which means it could be three of them, but we don't tend not to use that word if all three are the same, so we'll just say, if there's two equal sides to the triangle, we call it an isosceles triangle. So this is called an isosceles triangle because two of the sides are of exactly the same length. Now, if all three of the sides are the same length, instead of calling it an isosceles triangle, which we could, we call it an equilateral triangle. Equilateral means equal sides, all three sides are the same. We can also classify triangles by their angles. Here we have an example where one of the three angles is equal to 90 degrees. We call that a right triangle because there is one right angle, an angle of 90 degrees. If one of the three angles is greater than 90 degrees, we call it an obtuse triangle. Now, it's not possible to have a triangle that have two obtuse angles. In other words, two angles greater than 90 degrees, because we will learn that when you sum up the angles of a triangle, they always add up to 180 degrees, so it wouldn't be possible to have two angles greater than 90 degrees. So if one of the angles is greater than 90 degrees, we call it an obtuse triangle. If none of the angles are greater than 90 degrees, if all of them are less than 90 degrees, because if one of them is 90 degrees, then of course we call it a right triangle. Thus, if all of the angles are less than 90 degrees, we call it an acute triangle. Some other names we should be familiar with is the following. If we look at a triangle and we draw it in such a way that one of the sides is parallel to the bottom of your paper or your parallel to the bottom of the board, we call that the base, and then the perpendicular distance from the base to the highest point of the triangle, that's called the height. Now we can actually take that triangle and turn it over and draw it like this, then this now becomes the base, and this here becomes the height. Those things are important. We can also draw a line from one of the three vertices, and we can do it from each of the three vertices, really, to a point on the other side, on the side opposite the vertex, and if we draw a line from the vertex to the midpoint between this side here, that's then called a median. Now let's jump over to this drawing. Here we've drawn three medians, and notice that we draw them with dashed lines, but all three of them cross at a single point. That means that if we draw all three medians of a triangle, they will cross at a single point, and the distance of that point to each of the three sides is one-third the total length of each of the medians. We'll learn more about that later, but it's interesting to note that. Other names we should be familiar with if we're dealing with a right triangle, meaning one of the angles is 90 degrees, the longest side, which is opposite to the 90-degree angle, which becomes the longest side of the triangle, is called the hypotenuse, and the other two sides are called the legs of the triangle, sometimes also called the sides of the triangle. Notice here the word again, congruent. In this case, we're talking about congruent triangles. That means that all three sides and all three angles of the two triangles being compared to one another are of exactly the same size. Now, they may be oriented differently, 
But nevertheless, if all three sides are the same size and all three angles are the same size, they're called congruent triangles. Similar triangles are where they have the same shape, but they're of different size. In other words, the angles only are the same. So if only the angles are the same, but one is a small triangle and the other one is a big triangle, they have the same proportion in the sizes of their sides, and therefore it's called a similar triangle, but if all the three sides are the same size, including all the three angles are the same size, then we call them congruent triangles. Two triangles are congruent if, there's another way of value, evaluating whether or not triangles are congruent, three things must be the same in this particular order. If you can show that two sides and an angle are equal, then we can say the two triangles are congruent. So that means we don't have to show that all six are equal. It's sufficient to show that two sides and one angle are equal, then we know that the rest must be equal as well. Or, if we can show that two angles are equal and one of the sides are equal, then we can also be assured that the two triangles are congruent. Or, finally, if all three sides are equal to one another, if we can show that, then we don't have to show that the angles are equal. We know that also the angles are equal. So that's what we call side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, side, side. If we can show that these three are equal, either these three, these three, or th these three, we know the two triangles are congruent. So now we have a pretty good vocabulary. We have vocabulary of lines and line segments, angles, and now triangles. That's a pretty good set already. We'll have a few more videos to show you some additional names of some additional shapes and things in geometry, and then we're ready to really start tackling the course as a whole. So stay tuned, learn all the, the names and the nomenclatures we call it of all the various things in, in geometry, Try to memorize those, because if you don't know what they are and you keep seeing them over and over again, you'll get confused and it makes it difficult to understand geometry. But once you know the names clearly, it's a lot easier to learn geometry. So that's why we do this.